Okay, so we are doing our first discussion episode of August. And of course, uh, we are having Vanessa Riley back on the show. Her newest book is Queen of Exiles, and that's going to be our August book of the month. And I realized, I mean, obviously, I knew that we've had uh, Vanessa on twice before, but we've had her on the show for every single one of her books. For all three of her books. No, she's written more no? books than three. Has she really? Oh, yeah, well, now you're going to have to edit this. Like the past three books. Or the past three books. But maybe that's what it is. Okay, edit that out and make me look, make me sound smarter. Yeah. <laughs> than, I than that. no guarantees. <laughs> well, I apologize, Vanessa, if you listen to this, but I totally thought well i mean it's easy for us to think that she's only done like three books because we are the world stops and ends with one woman and one, right <laughs> i mean obviously i mean no, she, also writes right. books. she writes a lot of books and i say that with all due respect because i wish and that may be a question that we ask her is I, how do you write so many books um, okay, I I found my uh, my my out. We have had her on for all three of her historical fiction books uh-huh. because she writes historical romance and historical mystery. But we have had her on for her historical fiction book. There you go. There you go. I need oh, to- I I fixed it. <laughs> I made it work so but yes and I love it didn't even dawn on me until I was looking at all of the covers that um it's like the same script the same font that all three covers have the titles in and I just kind of love that that carry through for all three books oh right yeah I don't I just noticed that too (laughs) look at you with all of your I know I since this is audio only, I'm probably, gosh, I just lost my spot. I think I'm a chapter four. Mm. So I'm not, I'm not too far. And let me tell you why. Because you, people listening can't see, but I'm 33 pages in, right? That's chapter four or 32, Mm -hmm. I guess is chapter four. And I have one, two, three, four, five little tabs that I've put on, like, you know, the sticky tabs mm-hmm. that, that you mark on pages. And I have, like, notes. I have stuff underlined. And when she says and, notes, people, she means notes. There is, <laughs> and it's color coordinated. Like, is it thing. is. I, I feel like we need to post this video to match what we <laughs> just posted on Instagram to be able to see you're so like I feel I feel like David Tennant showing up with my sketch of the pineapple and you've got this beautiful brilliant video you're talking about (laughs) it is it's so pretty I have my my the you know the the book cover is purple and I have my purple tabs I have my purple pen or pink pen and purple highlighters and it it just makes my soul so happy you were so totally that kid at school that had everything matching your release of frank binders weren't you oh i had all the lisa frank folders i had but did everything color coordinate with your lisa frank i am all right you want to know what, what kind of kid i was i was the kid that had matching socks to go with the jellies that she wore so if I wore green jellies I had green socks (laughs) my mother was lucky if she could even get me to wear shoes so if we want to trace my my obsession with order and and Diana's I don't know coordination order <laughs> we can trace it back I, I have one particular picture in mind and I want to see if I can find it now from when I was like maybe five years old and I have neon green socks and neon green jellies on I was the cool kid what were you though 
in my mind. <laughs> and that's really all that matters. I was a weirdo kid. I'll admit it. I was a little weirdo who was drawing stuff randomly in the back of the class, reading a book, watching the birds outside the window, because I was far more interesting than my math lesson. Well, math, yeah, I don't blame you there. But I just, I'm obsessed with this book. There's just going to be so much, and you want to know, um, the level of nerd that I hit at the end of chapter one. More than what um, you already hit? Beyond the color coordinated tabs and highlighters and pens. Um, I read a book of well, just one once. I read this book. It was a duology and it was called Shadow. The duologies was called Shadow Histories. And it was like basically um by hg perry whom we had on the show at one point but was it? i think it was about the second book in that duology which is set in the period of history that queen of exiles is in mm. and now i have to go back and reread the book to see if um Oh my gosh, I'm completely blanking on uh, Louise. Louise, I couldn't remember her name. I have to go back and see if she is mentioned in that book as well, because I realized that in the first chapter, uh, Louise is in England and she meets this Englishman, uh, Englishman named Wilberforce. And I'm like, oh, I, I recognize that name. And all of a sudden I was like, oh, he was in the shadow histories and I'm he you know obviously he was a historic figure he really existed but that's not how I know him I know him from a historical fantasy book that I read earlier this year and I got really excited it was like a, a an old friend popping up from a different book so that was like the really long note that I made at the end of the chapter that uh I was like, all, I wrote kind of like who he was in history. And I wrote also, side note, he was in H.G. Perry's Shadow Histories duology. And I am fangirling at the crossover right now, even though it's not really crossover because it's not <laughs> the same story or universe or anything. It's a historical figure popping up in another book. I love when that happens because I've had that happen with books where um with my books where I've written about characters and I find them in somebody else's I mean even like we just looked at like talk to Laura Morelli and Caserta which I very much even though it's a place I very much feel of it feel it to be a character in and of itself and it popped up in her story as well but yeah well, I want to draw to your um attention do you know okay. in the back of the book there's a bibliophile? A bibli <laughs> bibliography? There's a bibliophile. Because that's what we are. No, it's a bibliography. Oh, yes. It's a bibliography of all of her resources. I am now I'm nerding out. I am loving this. Well, and also, oh gosh, all of the all of the reading. There's also throughout the novel they have she has uh, excerpts uh, from newspapers, mm -hmm. and those are actual. She puts a note at the beginning of the book that the excerpts were real. Mm -hmm. um, the newspaper clippings presented are authentic and taken from European and West Indian papers circulating during the time of Madame Marie Louise Christophe. So these newspaper clippings are, were real newspaper clippings. And I, that was a, a nerd out moment for that. And also, can we discuss the cast of characters? Yes, I like love that she did that as well, because it's so many people I've talked to at book clubs and whatnot. Um, I've gotten a lot of compliments for doing this for Antoinette's sister, because I had so many people within the family. So you need to have that cast of characters. And when I had... Um, for the, my book club that I went that I go to we had a book that had a lot of different characters 
And even though they weren't like royally um, listed, they had a, they were just like, I wish there was a cast of characters as well. And I mm-hmm. love that. And it's, it's one of these things where, you know, sometimes I feel like this is the detriment of society. One of the downsides of all of this technology and our lack of attention span that we have and we can't keep track of massive amounts of characters but have but not every story that we write that we can include is going to have two to three players because think about our own lives there's a lot of people that we talk to on a regular basis unless you're a hermit which is okay if you're a hermit and you can have that little story with the three people in it or less but so many of us are you know we work we have families we have friends we have the guy that annoys us across the street uh so we have this cast of characters and so our stories it's nice when there's a cast of characters that we can refer back to and I have highlight and annotate like Michelle because I feel like right now once I start reading this one because I haven't quite started it yet I've been a little sidetracked with like rebelliously reading I don't know if you do that Michelle but I'm like you know what I need to read something on my own that I'm not mandated to to read oh absolutely I have like re-embraced um you know we do a literary podcast and Mm -hmm. uh, you know we we read the books for the Mm -hmm. podcast and I love 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 reading the books um but I have re-embraced making time for myself to read what I want want to read too Mm -hmm. you know and I just love it I have I haven't been watching as much tv at night I've been turning up turning on like a an ambiance video where I'm in like a cozy bookstore playing, listening to jazz music on YouTube. And I just read and I have my color coordinated pens and highlighters. You know, there was a wonderful thing. So back in the day when Michelle and I were in our twenties working in that God awful uh, travel agency, we used to say, oh, wouldn't it be the dream to get paid to just read? Like every day, just pay to to read. Like that would be our job, to read on a daily basis. And here we are at this podcast eight years late, eight years later. And though we don't really get paid to do this, it, we still like it is part of our job that we read. We read at least mm-hmm. half a book, and it's still just a really wonderful feeling that we could go back and be like, oh. I want to go back and just like I want to be rebellious and read something we didn't set up already for the podcast <laughs> it's you know and it, it's and that's not to say that I don't love the books that that we read oh, I we have such have wonderful books incredible but there's something very fun if you're like, anyone who's listening who you know or, or writers who do you know book blurbs or uh what's, what's is that the technical term book blurbs yeah. uh-huh. um you know you enjoy them they're incredible books and they're books that maybe may have never crossed your path if you weren't doing that like we we read so many books that we probably may not have found on our own if it weren't for the podcast mm-hmm. But it is a very nice feeling to say, I'm going to read this because I pick it. I choose it. I was very much a mood reader before the podcast. Mm -hmm. And I still like to be a mood reader where I'm just like, you know what? I'm just not in the mood to read this today. I'm going to pick up this other book and Mm -hmm. I'm going to read that. And that's just, it's a nice feeling. It is. I have uh, discovered that I am a lover of Arthur- Arthurian, like King Arthur retellings, mm-hmm. um, or and not necessarily like from King Arthur's perspective, from different perspectives. Mm-hmm. And I just finished like this was a, a almost a five hundred page book, but. I blew through it and it was so cool, like post-apocalyptic, like 
you know, the year 2400 and the world's falling apart and mm -hmm. Sir Kay, you know, uh, King Arthur's uh, older brother, he comes, he's like this immortal uh, warrior that Merlin cast a spell on to always come back to life when the the realm is in peril and Lancelot is in it and it was epic and I loved it. <laughs> So, and it is on my shelf of Arthurian retellings. Mm. I, I <laughs> looking at my story graph of what I read the most, um, outside of historical fiction, like I'm very much, that's my genre, that obviously that's the one I love and end up gravitating towards uh, more, way more than any other. Like I think I've read 14, according to Storygraph this year. Um, but outside of that, romance is the one. That's my that's my secondary uh, genre mm. that I've that I read. There's like six, according to Storygraph, that I've read. This <laughs> I do enjoy the graphs on Storygraph. Oh, I do. I that make, they say. make my heart so happy. Like you want statistics, you got them. You you can see how many genres you read how many books you read I am way behind my reading goal I don't think I'm going to hit 75 but I also don't think I've recorded all the books that I've read so you know I that's may actually be ahead I stopped um doing the goals for myself like Too much pressure it is it is and then I'm like at the end of the year I'm like oh my god I didn't hit my goal of 50 books what am I going to do it's great well, you have to, to figure it's great to read to voraciously and just devour books because I think as an author you need that you need to be able to do that because writing is very much a part of our writing process but with Ooh. that being said we shouldn't have the pressure of reading books just to read them so that we get a number on our checklist to say okay I've read this book all right I've got so many I'm great we should be able to read for the enjoyment of reading. I just learned something. Uh -oh. If you tap, you know, the little bar graph of all the genres that you read, oh. if you tap on each individual genre, it'll go to a new page and show you the books that you've read that fall in that category. I didn't know that. That's exciting. My fiction versus nonfiction pie chart is um almost fully <laughs> it is entirely fiction yeah like mine was 100 percent. that was mine until i started drafting my uh book and then there's like there's i see my pie oh chart. yeah because i'm drafting a book and i'm doing research for my book i have 10 percent is non-fiction while 90 percent is 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 fiction i should read more non-fiction books i have a bunch you know, I personally am, I, the only way that I'm interested in nonfiction is if it's about something I'm researching. It's very hard for me to read a nonfiction book. I have to sneeze and it's not committing. It's very well, irritating. On that note. <laughs> Sorry. I was trying to like move it along so I could mute myself and sneeze but it decided no nope, it's not ready mm -hmm. it's gonna marinate for a little longer oh that just sounds lovely <laughs> isn't it I paint a picture with my words don't I you are a writer mm -hmm. show don't tell <laughs> well I know everyone <laughs> be sure to pick up your copy of the queen of exiles you can get it at the bookshop.org we'll have a link in our show notes please be sure to check it out bookshop.org supports this podcast it supports all of the authors who take their time out of their day to come and talk to us and most importantly it supports all the independent bookstores out there in addition to that we also have a link on our show notes uh, where you can help support the podcast if you've already purchase the book and buy us a cup of coffee for only three dollars i feel like i'm doing a pitch about <laughs> save these puppies but please save great. more puppies <laughs> that do this podcast and like read books and buy us a cup of coffee it's one of our basic food groups it, it truly is 
I actually told sure. somebody recently coffee is my love language. Yep. You know, and I, I had a cup of coffee this afternoon at like at four o'clock in the afternoon. And I thought, mm, I don't know, that's probably a bad idea. Future Michelle is, is going to regret that, but present Michelle wants the coffee. So, you know, so future it, Michelle it, it, is yeah. going to regret that. Mm-hmm. Anywho, enjoy the rest of your evening, everyone. Have a good one. Bye.